Rockford getting a huge break there on some shots that did not fall. Withdrawal on the left-hand side gets fouled and the ball falls in. That was right what the doctor ordered. Yep, and Joe Boomer's got the and one coming. That's four points now for Boomer, going for the end one. And they can cut this lead in half. The left-hander gets ready. Fires it up and banks it in. I am not too sure, Kate, did you hear him call board? I did not. <laughs> Either way, it's good. <laughs> So Vorce doing a great job of coming down, loses control, and Lincoln Way, Culbertson, was in the right place at the right time to regain possession of the ball. Yeah, I don't know what the Chariots said during that timeout, but they've coming out with a little bit more fire in their, uh, in their attitude. Whoa. Now we're down to five point lead, and Rockford gets the ball, and the ball is stripped away by Duffy. And the ball goes back to Rockford. 4.46 left. Plenty of time now, Kate, at this point. It's a five-point ball game. You're right. Rockford can get some points here. It'd be a huge momentum shift. Coach Justin South is over there trying to bark out instructions to his troops. Holding foul on Harrison. Bottom of the foot plate. Foul on the foul for the 42, Justin Harrison. That's his second, fourth team foul. Cameron Poole Pool. from the side and just does not get it to fall and. Chariot's ball. They caught a break there. Ball must have went off a chair. I can't quite tell from was, where we're at. Yeah, but off of Zoe Voris. Inbounded, looking for Poole. Ball stolen, and Duffy's got it. Chariots applying a lot of pressure now in the backcourt. Hamilton doing a great job of bringing that ball back out again. Hamilton from the right-hand side, fires it up and misses. Gets his own rebound, fires it back up again and in. What a beautiful Kevin shot. Kevin he Kevin just came up strong, Kate. Great confidence by Kevin Hamilton. Rockford pushing the ball back up quickly. We're now down to about 3.30. Jake from three just misses off the mark. Lincoln Way with a rebound. I think, Kate, we got to start uh, burning some. No, we've got to start burning some fouls. fouls early. You're right. Duffy just being really smart with the ball right now. Tell him, come on out and get it if you want it. And, and Cameron Poole being aggressive, forcing that jump ball. It's going to the Chariots. 3.03 left. Great instinct by Cameron Poole. Sure was. And Jake Greger With gets the, the and shot one. and the and one. Eight points for that young man. We're back to five. Basket good at the line. Jake Greger. And Rockford just will not go away. And fires it up, just missing off to the right. And they get their own rebound, and they take a full timeout. Timeout on the floor. Timeout, 
Matt Bushy, I got a quick question for you. We've got 251 left. They take a full timeout. What would you what would you like to see from Rockford? What would you like to see from Lincoln Way at this point? Uh, that's a good question. I got to take it on both sides now. I'm going to go Rockford first. Okay. okay. Um, with Rockford, you got to make sure that we're attacking effectively on offense. Right now, we've been taking too much time, okay. burning a lot of clock. We got to go and make sure that we're taking good looks, setting picks, and rolling the basket. Anytime you're coming in with make a layup, it looks like the Falcons are making contact and going with the and one. So I want to go to that, push that, try to get ourselves on the free throw line. For the Falcons, it's great defense. Hold the ball, slow the game down, and let the Chariots make the decision. Okay, If they come out and they take a chance on chair contact, they can take it to the basket and keep the score up. Very good points. Now at this point, they still only have one team foul. Would you start burning timeouts as soon as, uh, or, I'm sorry, start burning down yeah. fouls as soon as they start possessing the ball? Well, you're kind of late to the game when you have that many fouls that you need to burn to get into it. Now you got to play tough defense and rely on the referees to make sure that this game is not ruled by the refs and it's played by the players. Absolutely. Very good points. Thank you so much, Massive. We are about to inbound the ball. 2.51 left. Rockford ball underneath. And over to the left side is Boomer. Oh, he just missed off with the left hand. And the ball goes off of... The Lincoln Way Falcons and Chariots get the ball back again. Boomer underneath. Passing the ball to Withdraw. Withdraw trying to find something. Teammates are coming around a little bit. Jake Greger coming over on the left hand side. Fires up a three and just misses, but withdraws over there the, to get the rebound. Or Boomer, I'm sorry. A long two. Glenn Denning hits two. We've got a timeout for the Chariots. Kate, we have got a three-point lead now. If you are Coach Pete over there for Lincoln Way, you've got that three-point lead, and they have been really kind of sitting on the ball, and it hasn't been working for them. At this point, do you go back to being aggressive and going after the basket? I, th I think you have to at this point. I mean, but smart aggressive. So making sure that the passes are on cue to your teammates, and making sure that you're seeing all the reads and taking the best ones for you at that time. Very good points. So Lincoln Way is going to be underneath the Rockford basket, inbounding. Rockford is applying pressure, and they are going man to man, leaving Cameron Poole in the back. Duffy coming across timeline. Pass the ball to Zovor. Zovoris looking for an open Duffy. Duffy open on the right-hand side and fires it up, misses. Gets his own rebound and puts it back up. Misses the ball, and the ball goes off a of Lincoln Way. We got a Rockford ball. We are down to 2.04 left, 22 to 19. This is an exciting ball game. Yep, and you can see Coach South there on Chariots giving the signal to, to push it but calm down. Push it but calm. We've got a man in the backcourt down. He's out of the play, so play will continue. So it's a five on four, Rockford. Long three. Lincoln Way comes up with the ball. Stoppage, and now they'll get that man up. Inbounding the ball to Zoe Forrest. Back to Duffy. Duffy in the backcourt. They do have a 10 second count that they have to worry about. Looks like they get the ball over yep. just in time. Stuck in that corner now though. It's a bad place to be in. Rockford being aggressive, swiping at the ball. Does not get it over to Culbertson on the right hand side. We're still at a three point game with a minute 26 left. Good ball goes off of Duffy and Rockford gets the ball back. That is a huge break, Kate, for Rockford. So they found that fire somewhere. Looks like senior Joel Boomer doesn't want to leave this game without a fight. Jake Greger trying to find an opening. And they leave him wide open at the top of the key, and he just rims out. Zoe Voris with a huge rebound. 
And Coach Pete Megalstorff says, I want a timeout. We got to talk about this. Full timeout, Kate. We are seeing a cat mouse game here. This must have been what it was like to see uh, our semifinal game. Oh my gosh, yes. Edge of my seat here. <laughs> Good to be able to enjoy a game as a spectator rather than a coach. Absolutely. Well, the Fighting Illini, both Kate and Matt, do just such a fantastic job along with Stephanie Wheeler. Yep, we're looking at shooting percentages for the games. They were evenly matched at 25 and 26 percent. Um, 25 for the Chariots, 26 percent for the Falcons. So we're looking at a really close ball game here on paper and on court. Coach Matt Bush, he made a, just a fantastic comment here at the last time out where the burning the fouls just, it, it was too late at this point. So they're just gonna have to rely on their defense, hope for a little bit of luck here, and just hope the ball falls here. Very low scoring game. I think that can be attributed to the great defense on both ends. Absolutely. Lincoln way inbounding the ball, getting to a tall Zolvoris. And Gregor knocks the ball out of bounds and Lincoln way will maintain the ball underneath their own basket. We are down to 56 seconds left in the game. Three point ball game. Duffy. And it looks like there's a Chariots foul. That's only their second team foul. They've got a long way to go for the one and one. Harrison inbounding on the side, Oda Duffy. And Chariots pick up another quick foul. Yeah, they've got a lot to burn, but as long as they're trying to go for the ball, if they can get a steal rather than a foul, which I, I'd be telling them to do, go yeah, for the absolutely. steal they can come up on top on these ones. 13 foul on Rockford. And Harrison finding an open so force underneath the basket with a big shot for her. Huge shot, that's eight points for Zoe Voris. Five point ball game, Rockford needs a quick basket. Jake Greger coming down the middle. He is gonna fire up, uh, he's gonna try to fire up the three, couldn't, the ball gets stripped away, and Glenn Denning gets the ball, but they're losing time here, Kate. We're down to 15 seconds. Glenn Denning fires up the three and does not shy. go. And Zoe Voris with the big rebound, and that should be about it. What a great way, though, to finish out the state final game. Right down to the wire. Could have win either way. Coach South on the Chariots pulling his senior off. Hugs all around. We have a jump ball, one second left. We'll have the inbound and then that will be it. Kate, I saw a lot of no quit from both of these teams. Definitely an impressive fight and composure all around. It was a great game, you know, and the Chariots could have given up when they were down 10, 12 and they kept fighting all the way through. That's, that's what we like to see. Absolutely. And the good thing is, for a lot of these seniors, is they do have one more rodeo left, and that is in Louisville, Kentucky. That is true. And that'll be here in about a month, and it's uh, right around the middle of uh, April. They, uh, they play games from Thursday through Sunday, and it's just a great venue. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they have everywhere from the juniors all the way up to the adults that play and yeah, it's a great showcase and we also have the wounded veterans coming in this year oh, Kate, which is just fantastic Wolfpack coming back or are they adding more teams now uh, as far as what now are they is it the Wolfpack coming back or are they adding teams they're adding teams they're adding teams that yes. is awesome 
it's good to hear. You know, when you can see the sport grow and you can see what it, it does and see from start to finish through the season, it's spectacular. It absolutely is. Well, they're about ready to do the awards presentations, which we will not cover. It possibly could be uh, via video stream, but we will not be announcing the, uh, the awards. But uh, with Kate and Matt, thank you both so very, very much for joining me. And I am Dave Ryder. Thank you both. You did a fantastic job, and this was a lot of fun. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks. I knew before it even left my hand. Why? Because every shot I take is the most important one of my life. game-changing, tie-turning moments of high school sports. Under Armour Highlights of the Week on the NFHS Network.
I knew before it even left my hand. Why? Because every shot I take is the most important one of my life. game-changing, tie-turning moments in high school sports. Under Armour Highlights of the Week on the NFHS Network. Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. National studies show that students who participate in activities like music, sports, and drama not only have better grades and attendance, but they develop the character to handle adversity, the grace to accept defeat, and the self-confidence to start over. Take part. Get set for life. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. This isn't Madison Square Garden. These drills probably won't make anyone a number one draft pick. But these players are practicing for something important. While they work on their jump shots, they're also learning teamwork, discipline, self-confidence, how to deal with wins and losses. Skills that will make them winners long after they leave the court. Support high school activities in your community. Because when kids take part, they get set for life.
I knew before it even left my hand. Why? Because every shot I take is the most important one of my life. game-changing, tie-turning moments in high school sports. Under Armour Highlights of the Week on the NFHS Network. Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. National studies show that students who participate in activities like music, sports, and drama not only have better grades and attendance, but they develop the character to handle adversity, the grace to accept defeat, and the self-confidence to start over. Take part. Get set for life. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. This isn't Madison Square Garden. These drills probably won't make anyone a number one draft pick. But these players are practicing for something important. While they work on their jump shots, they're also learning teamwork, discipline, self-confidence, how to deal with wins and losses. Skills that will make them winners long after they leave the court. Support high school activities in your community. Because when kids take part, they get set for life.
I knew before it even left my hand. Why? Because every shot I take is the most important one of my life. game-changing, eye-turning moments in high school sports. Under Armour Highlights of the Week on the NFHS Network. Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. Now ready for part two, number 21, Matt Olson. National studies show that students who participate in activities like music, sports, and drama not only have better grades and attendance, but they develop the character to handle adversity, the grace to accept defeat, and the self-confidence to start over. Take part. Get set for life. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. This isn't Madison Square Garden. These drills probably won't make anyone a number one draft pick. But these players are practicing for something important. While they work on their jump shots, they're also learning teamwork, discipline, self-confidence, how to deal with wins and losses. Skills that will make them winners long after they leave the court. Support high school activities in your community. Because when kids take part, they get set for life.
ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to mid-court for the presentation of the team and individual awards for the 2015 IHSA Wheelchair Basketball Tournament. Presenting medallions will be members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors attending tonight's game. With us here tonight, please welcome Robert Nolte, Principal of Tinley Park Andrew. John Stimler, Principal of Chicago Mount Carmel High School. Scott Adrian, Principal of Morora Forsyth High School. B. Kent Jones, Principal of Breeze Central High School. Gerald Morrow, Principal of Chicago Ropeson. And IHSA Treasurer, Gregory Bradley of Forsyth Decatur Christian. At this time, please meet the Peoria Wildcats. The Wildcats finished the tournament in third place with a final tournament record, two wins, three losses. Introducing head coach Mike Van Cleve. Assistant coach Katie Van Cleve. Manager Aaron Klobnock. And this year's roster, congratulations to this team. First up, number one, Jonathan McNamara. Number three, Nathan Schertz. Number 10, Maya Pride Waite. Number 12, Corey Schutler. Number 20, Denton Stapleton. Number 22, Trevor Tucci. Number 23, Michael Egenhaus. Number 25, Clayton Stapleton. Number 44, Savannah Klobnock. Number 55, Chauncey Wolf. Number 33, Logan Janfren. And number 15, Chase Hamilton. Ladies and gentlemen, your third place state champions, the Peoria Wildcats. At this time, please meet the Rockford Junior Chariots. The Chariots finish in second place with a final tournament record. Four wins, one loss. Introducing and congratulations to head coach Justin South. <laughs> Assistant coach J.R. Boyer. And manager Paula Ryder. And let's meet the team. Graduating senior number 30, Joel Boomer. <laughs> number 11. Will Glendenning. Number 10, Cameron Poole. Number 20, Peyton Withrow. Number 24, Jeffrey Withrow. Graduating senior, number 31, Jake Greger. Number 40, Jesse Garrett. Number seven, Luke, Lucas Stover. Also assistant manager, Keith Wallace. We're a little quick on that one. Hold that thought. At this time, let's meet the Rolling Falcons. Finishing in first place with a final tournament record, five wins, zero losses. Congratulations to head coach Peter Mengelsdorf. And 
the state champion team, number one, Brandon View. Number four, Zoe Forrest. Number 10, Kevin Hamilton. Number 15, Zachary Gorecki. Graduating senior, number 42, Justin Harrison. Number 33, Tim Culbertson. Number 22, Thomas Duffy. Graduating senior, number 23, Tony Bensema. Number 34, Marquise Poe. Graduating senior, number 35, Tamara Hayes. And lest we forget anyone, we're looking for Keith Wallace. Keith Wallace, congratulations. Now for the trophy presentations. Will coach Mike Van Cleve of the Peoria Wildcats please come forward to receive the third place trophy. <laughs> coach Van Cleve accompanied by Nathan Schertz. Next up will coach Justin South of the Rockford Junior Chariots. Please come forward to receive the second place state trophy. And this year's state champion will coach Peter Mangelsdorf and his team step forward from the Rolling Falcons to receive the first place state championship trophy. Fans having a nice round of applause for all the teams in this tournament. Hard-working athletes. A tremendous tournament this year, 2015. I'll get mine, I'll get out of your way, okay. Perfect. One, two, three. Hold it like this, mom and dad. 